Unigen's built-in physics module is capable of simulating different types of physical interactions and impacts. Though in general, Unigen uses simplified physics approximation with an impulse-based approach and cannot be used for high-precision scientific simulations. It provides support for gravity and collision detection, friction and bouncing, buoyancy and two-way water interaction, joints with motors and springs, procedural destruction, ragdoll bodies, deformable ropes and tearing cloth, and external physical forces. This enables realistic simulation of physical bodies and complex interactions with the environment. Objects represented by meshes can be physics-driven and interact with other objects and external forces. To make an object physics-driven, make sure that the collider object flag is enabled. This puts the node to a separate spatial tree for physical objects. Uncheck this flag for all objects that are not intended to take part in physical simulations to optimize performance. Then switch to the Physics tab of the Parameters window and adjust Physics settings. To interact with the environment, an object must have a physical body assigned, defining its behavior. For example, rigid body, the most commonly used type representing a solid non-deformable object. Set the mass-related parameters and start physical simulation via the physics toggle on the toolbar. Physical simulation requires the current world state to be saved, so if you have unsaved changes, a confirmation pop-up will appear. Confirm and enter the mode in which all physical objects become dynamic. While the cube is now affected by the force of gravity set globally. After checking out the simulation, toggle off physics to revert all changes applied to dynamic objects. Collision detection requires the body to have a shape aside, a rough approximation of the volume of space occupied by the physical body. Select a shape type from the list and click Add. Box is obviously the best option to approximate the cube mesh. Check the shape-based option for automatic calculation of mass-related parameters based on the shape. The table also needs a collision shape, and we also going to make the body immovable to avoid eternal falling. Start the simulation. Now two bodies collide like real solid objects. Collisions between two physical objects are called shape-to-shape -shape collisions. You can enable visualization of shapes and contacts between them via the helper's physics toggle to check out collisions. This option is very useful in development, especially for VR projects. Physics helpers are displayed only when physical simulation is enabled. You can pause simulation at any moment by toggling off the application logic and save the result just by saving the world. Although be aware that this will replace the initial transforms of all objects and these changes can't be reverted. In addition to detecting collisions between shapes, Unigen provides collision detection between shapes and static surfaces as well. These are shape-to-surface collisions. We'll talk about it later and now let's take a closer look at physics settings. First of all, you should be aware of an important limitation. Scaling of meshes that participate in collision detection is not supported. Therefore, when assigning a physical body to an object, make sure that its scale parameters are default. Otherwise, the scale will be reset automatically on starting physical simulation. Along with rigid body, a set of various body types is provided for different cases and effects. Dummy body is a static auxiliary object without physical properties. It can be used as an attachment point. Ragdoll body enables inverse kinematics for bone animated characters and objects. Fracture body enables convincing real-time destruction of objects. Rope body enables physical simulation of various types of ropes and wires. Cloth body allows simulating various types of cloth. Water body enables physical simulation of liquids and different density and viscous behavior including the buoyancy effect and wave dynamics. Path body is a static type of body without physical properties. It is a spline, along which an arbitrary rigid body can be moved. Each body has a set of physical parameters defining its behavior. You can enable and disable the body to toggle physical interactions for an object or make it immovable. Such objects ignore any external forces and can be used as static colliders. The gravity option defines if the global gravity force affects the body. You can also specify a name for the body. There are also velocity parameters to adjust. The linear and angular scale parameters are multipliers for movement and rotation. Set the relevant component to zero to restrict movement and rotation along a certain axis. The damping values define the intensity of constant reduction of the corresponding velocities. The linear damping force slows down body's movement, while the angular damping force affects its rotation. The same global parameters are applied to all bodies in the scene. 
The ones set per body are simply added to global. You can set maximum velocity constraints for movement and rotation either globally or per body. The lowest value will be used to avoid excess velocities that may lead to incorrect simulation. The freezable flag enables freezing optimization for the body. When objects linear and angular velocities remain lower than the corresponding frozen linear and angular velocity parameters for a certain period, the engine assumes that the object has come to a halt and excludes it from simulation, except for collision detection, to improve performance. A frozen object remains static until it is affected by a force or another object. Freezing is controlled via the global frozen frames parameter value and frozen velocity values set globally and per body. Greater ones are used. You can adjust mass, inertia tensor, and center of mass for a body manually. But a better way is to describe the body with a set of collision shapes defining the volume of space occupied by it. Shapes are not only for collision detection. They can also define mass distribution for the object, as well as some material parameters. Toggle on the shape-based flag to enable automatic calculation of body parameters. In the shape section, select one of the following shape types to add to the body. Primitives, sphere, capsule, cylinder, and box are the simplest and the fastest. Virtually any geometry can be approximated by a set of primitives. Convex hulls that are generated automatically as approximations of mesh geometry. To generate a convex hull, you should specify the approximation error, mesh simplification degree, and the engine will do the rest. The auto-generated option creates several convex hulls to approximate the geometry even more precisely based on such parameters as the degree of mesh decomposition, approximation error, and volume threshold used for merging convex shapes after decomposition. There are also several preset groups of shapes for the most common use cases. A set of shapes should not duplicate the mesh it approximates. It's strongly recommended to keep the complexity and the number of shapes as low as possible to reduce the computational load. In most cases, it provides acceptable results. As for shape settings, you can toggle the shape on and off, provide a name, adjust mass or density. These values are interdependent. Choose the friction coefficient with higher values. The shape is less prone to sliding and the restitution coefficient defining the shape bounciness. Shape's transformation can be adjusted via the position, rotation and size vectors as well as via the edit size mode visually. It is not recommended to use real values of physical parameters such as mass, density, gravity and so on. To ensure realistic behavior, the values are to be chosen experimentally. In a complex scene, there may be multiple physics-driven objects. Not all of them are required to interact. For optimization purposes, you can define several groups of interacting objects by adjusting collision bit masks. Only shapes with matching masks, at least one bit, will collide. Exclusion masks can be used to define shapes that should ignore each other. Thus, you can fine-tune, for example, a complex rig made of multiple colliding parts. Physics is simulated with its own fixed frame rate, independent of the rendering frame rate, thus making calculation results stable. You can adjust the number of physics ticks per second, during which calculations are performed in the global physics settings. Be aware that a too high physics frame rate can cause rendering lags and result in skipping calculations. Basically, collisions are calculated each physics tick. This approach is called discrete collision detection. Such discretization improves performance and is accurate enough. However, when the frame rate is low, small fast moving objects are likely to teleport from one point to another instead of moving there smoothly, so collisions are not detected. This issue can be avoided via the continuous collision detection. Moving bodies are extruded along their trajectory, forming a volume used for collision detection at higher speeds. Continuous collision detection is supported only by capsule and sphere shapes. To enable it, simply check the continuous flag. You can enable continuous collision detection for other objects by using preset groups of shapes for the most common use cases. Intersection detection is also available for shapes. Use intersection mask to filter through shapes during ray casting. As physics simulation is performed in a separate thread, it has a separate update logic. Intersections performed in the main thread may be pretty useful to synchronize physics with logic when immediate time critical actions are required. For example, when a certain action, let's say an explosion, is to be performed immediately after contact,
A scene can contain a huge number of static colliding objects. Making them all physics-driven is a waste of performance. A better solution is to assign physical properties only to dynamic objects and enable the collider object and collision flags for surfaces of surrounding objects, making them act as static colliders based on their meshes. These are shape-to-surface collisions. Adjust physics-related parameters of the surface to define its material features. The friction and restitution coefficients work the same way as the corresponding shape parameters, but are used only when the object has no physical shape assigned. Surface parameters also include intersection and collision bit masks used as described before. As shape-to-surface collisions are calculated automatically based on surface geometry, it is possible to create kinematic colliders, for example, via scripting or bone-based animation. Such objects are driven by logic and are not subject to physical simulation, but still can have collision surfaces. You can move an object or even change its geometry via code, making it a dynamic collider, changing over time as the corresponding flag is enabled. The same way a physical object can collide with the global terrain, just enable the collider object flag and choose which levels of detail are collidable. Both collision and intersection bit masks are available as well. Collisions can be used to restrict camera movement. Actor, prosecutor, and spectator players support collision detection so you can prevent them from passing through walls and objects. Dummy body is an auxiliary static body. It can have shapes assigned to collide with other bodies. For example, you can create a dummy object, choose Create, Physics, Object Dummy, and assign a dummy body to it. Then specify collision shapes and you've got an invisible collider object. Dummy body can also represent a prop to attach other bodies to. Bodies are attached to each other using joints. We'll consider them later. Ragdoll body enables inverse kinematics and procedural animation of a death sequence for bone animated characters. A ragdoll body can be assigned only to skinned meshes. So to create a ragdoll, select a skinned mesh and assign the corresponding body to it. After that, the list of bones will appear in the body's parameters. For now, all the bones are free. They have no rigid bodies associated with them. Click Create to automatically generate a rag doll that approximates the geometry with shapes and constraints. But first, make sure that the mesh skinned object has a reference pose applied in the animation parameter. A static animation containing the reference pose is required for proper automatic generation of a physical rag doll. For example, the T pose for a human like character. Then click Create. Specify the total mass of the body that will be automatically distributed among all shapes, the approximation error, and the volume threshold defining the accuracy of the approximation and choose the type of shapes to approximate the geometry of the character. Capsule for faster simulation and continuous collision detection or convex for a more precise approximation. If you're not satisfied with the result of automatic shape generation, you can manually create bone hierarchy as a hierarchy of nodes with rigid bodies connected via joints. Save it to a node file and load it for your skinned mesh via the corresponding button. After ragdoll creation, all the bones represented in the hierarchy are marked as bound. All small bones not participating in the physical body movement remain marked as free. Apply an arbitrary animation to the character to check out the ragdoll simulation. The animation is bone driven if the frame based option is checked. Otherwise, the body is simulated as a ragdoll. Frame based option can also be toggled on and off per bone. Thus, you can configure a partially animated ragdoll body. Enable procedural fracturing of geometry by using Fracture Physical Body. Such body can be assigned to a mesh dynamic object only. Generation of fracture pieces is available only via code where you can specify the impulse and vector of the impact and choose the fracture pattern. Slicing, cracking, and shattering. More details are available in the documentation. Adjust the minimum volume threshold for the size of fracture pieces and remove them after a certain period to optimize performance. Uncheck the broken flag to restore the initial state of the body. Rope body is used to simulate different kinds of ropes and wires, saving the time that could be wasted on animation. Only cylindrical dynamic meshes are supported. Create a detailed enough cylinder primitive, pay attention to the number of stacks, and assign the rope body to it. This type of physical body is modeled as a set of rigid particles located in the mesh vertices. Collisions are detected only for them. Adjust the collision radius of the points and check out the simulation. You can control the elasticity and flexibility of the rope. 
adjust the stretch factor and the linear and angular thresholds to define the limit, after which the rope will be torn apart. Ropes can be pinned to rigid ragdoll and dummy bodies via joints. Cloth body type is intended for cloth simulation and also uses particle-based model. An arbitrary dynamic mesh can be used as the initial geometry. More detailed mesh provides more precise simulation. In most cases, it is important that polygon triangulation of the mesh for which cloth body is generated is as illustrated. Otherwise, it may not stretch properly and evenly in all directions. Select cloth and adjust the following parameters. Collision radius of points, stretching and restitution of the cloth. For more accurate simulation, increase the number of iterations. Simulation of this type of physical body is pretty costly and may require some optimizations. For example, you can pre-simulate the cloth and save it as a mesh asset to use later, or decrease performance affecting parameters for real-time simulation at the cost of stability and realistic look. A cloth can be torn apart when stretched if certain distance or angle limits controlled via the linear and angular threshold parameters are exceeded for adjacent particles. In this case, joints connect them break and a tear appears. Cloth bodies can also be pinned to different bodies via joints. We'll discuss that a bit later. Water body enables physical simulation of liquids in different density and viscous behavior. It also models an appropriate buoyance force on submerged objects and wave dynamics. Two-way interaction is calculated, which means that water affects submerged bodies and is affected by these bodies in return. Water body can be assigned to water mesh and dynamic mesh objects. Create a water mesh. Refer to the water video tutorial to learn how to create water meshes and assign water body to it. Then adjust the following physical parameters. Depth determines the size of waves. Deeper basins tend to provide higher waves. Use the intersection feature to estimate the actual distance to the underlying geometry, such as terrain, and use it as depth of the basin. For that, you should make the water node a child of a terrain or a static mesh. Thus, the depth of the basin is estimated automatically, resulting in accurate waves height. If intersection is unchecked, the value of the depth parameter is used. Density defines buoyancy of objects according to Archimedes' principle. By the value of zero, objects will rather fall through the water without resistance. Higher values increase the buoyant force. Liquidity defines the viscosity of water. It determines how readily it splashes and affects wave formation. The higher this value, the more viscous the water is, and the smaller the waves risen by the objects are. However, avoid setting too high values as it may lead to unstable simulation. You can try adjusting interaction to regain stability. The interaction coefficient defines the amount of disturbance on the water surface produced by immersed objects. By the value of zero, the water surface completely ignores all objects. The linear and angular damping parameters serve for decreasing the corresponding velocities of immersed objects due to the water resistance. Higher values make linear or angular velocity damping more intense, and objects slow down faster as they get into water. The waves from objects in this case become more pronounced as the energy of the system increases. The absorption feature creates an effect either of a limited basin or an open water surface that does not have marked boundaries. Keep it disabled for limited basins to make waves reflected by the edges and look more realistic. To simulate open water surface with no boundaries, the feature should be enabled. To improve performance and avoid excessive load, water simulation can be limited to the specific distance. When the water body is beyond this limit, physical calculations are not performed though objects preserve their buoyancy. It is possible to create an additional visual effect of small droplets, splashes, or bubbles on water when objects fall into it. To enable this effect, create a particle system with the spark emitter type and make it a child of the water object. Particles are generated when an object contacts the water surface. Already submerged bodies float without generating them. The spawn threshold parameter is useful for adjusting the velocity threshold of generated splashes. Path body represents a spline along which an arbitrary rigid body can be moved. This type of body can be used to create a physically simulating train moving along the rail track. The main parameter here is the path asset containing the trajectory. You can import a trajectory created in a third-party digital content creation software as a path asset by using Unigen plugins. In virtual worlds, like in the real world, we would like to have complex objects consisting of several interconnecting parts, like mechanisms, vehicles, and characters. Connect two physical bodies by using joints, representing constraints that attach bodies to each other, and limit degrees of their movement freedom. Use the fixed joint to connect two bodies in a manner that strictly preserves their positions with respect to each other. Click Add and specify another body to be attached, so when one of the connected bodies moves, the other tends to restore its position relative to it. 
Enable Joints Visualization via the Helpers panel. The joint connects two anchor points. You can adjust them in the joint's parameters or reset anchors to the centers of mass via the corresponding buttons. When using joints, it's very important to assure mass balance. Values are to be chosen experimentally, but avoid connecting two heavy bodies to light ones, otherwise the system may become unstable. Other parameters such as restitution and softness are used to adjust joint strength and behavior. The iterations value defines precision of calculations while solving the joint. If a force or torque higher than the max force and max torque values is applied to the joint, it breaks like in real life. The hinge, ball, cylindrical, and prismatic joints are great for creating joints and mechanisms with movement of bodies restricted in a certain manner. The hinge joint allows the components to rotate along one axis. It can be used for doors or limbs of a character. To find the axis via the axis vector parameter, rotation is controlled by an angular motor attached. The velocity and torque parameters define its strength and direction. You can also adjust rotation limits via the from and to parameters and damping coefficient and the spring, the target angle and spring rigidity. That is how strong the joint resists the rotation. The ball joint provides a point around which the components can rotate. It is an analog of the human hip joint. Rotation can be limited via the constraint parameters. The cylindrical and prismatic joints are quite similar. They they both allow movement along the joint axis, which can be used to imitate movement of a piston. The linear motor and spring control movement and the target distance. The only difference is that the cylindrical joint has an additional degree of freedom, rotating along the axis controlled by corresponding angular motor. The wheel and suspension joints are intended to simulate vehicles and interaction of a wheel with the ground. They both imitate the work of suspension and have corresponding angular motors providing torque to the wheel. While the suspension joint operates with the physical shape of the wheel, which serves for accurate collision detection, the wheel joint handles a virtual wheel and checks for intersections with the ground via ray casting. This approach is faster and provides an acceptable result for smooth terrain, for example, for racing car simulation. But in case of a stair-step ground surface and complex shaped wheels, the suspension joint is to be used instead. The particles joint is used to pin a rope or a cloth body to a rigid rag doll or dummy body. For example, to hang up a flag, select a pillar, add a particles joint, and specify an object with a cloth body assigned. Specify the position and the size of the volume within which the cloth points are pinned. Set the threshold value and that's it. The same way a cloak can be pinned to a skin character with a ragdoll body assigned. However, it's not recommended to attach cloth directly to the skin model, as difference in topologies may result in visual artifacts. Instead, it's best to create a part of an identical cloth surface on the skinned character, attach the cloth to it, and hide the auxiliary piece. The path joint is used to attach a rigid body to a path body and to make it move along the path. Select a rigid body, add a path joint and specify a path body. After that, movement of the rigid body will be restricted to the specified path. The joint has a linear motor attached. Configure it via the force and velocity parameters to control motion. Relative rotation of the body is available for adjustment via the corresponding vector parameter. Use the damping parameter to restrain motion. Physics-driven objects can be affected by a set of physical effects. Wind is a cuboid-shaped object simulating wind blowing within its volume. The wind is controlled by the following parameters. Size and attenuation threshold. Velocity vector. Damping of linear and angular velocity of objects when they get inside the wind volume. Each physical effect has the physical bit masking for filtering through physical bodies affected by it. The physical mask of the physical effect must match the physical mask of the physical body to affect it. Force is a spherical effect with a force applied to its center within the specified radius. You can set attenuation of intensity with the distance from the force center. The attractor parameter defines the intensity of attraction. It can be positive and negative. The rotator value stands for the rotation force and defines the intensity direction of rotation. Noise is a cuboid shaped area that adds a distribution flow based on a volumetric noise texture. It can be used to simulate a force field that affects particles and physical bodies with a spatial 3D noise. When adding a noise effect, specify texture generation and sampling parameters, as well as the force multiplier, so that particles and physical bodies are affected by forces according to the texture. You can animate the force field at runtime by changing texture sampling parameters. Water is a cuboid shaped area inside which water interaction effects are simulated. This effect is useful for simulation of physical interaction of objects with the global water object, which doesn't support water physical body. Note, however, 
however, that you cannot simulate waves via the physical water effect. Along with the density and damping parameters, you can also specify the velocity vector of the flow. Trigger is in effect firing callbacks when physical objects get inside or outside it. It can have one of the following shapes, sphere, capsule, cylinder, and box. Specify world script callback functions to be fired on entering and leaving events. Global physics related settings are used for optimization and fine tuning. You can define the distance from the camera starting from which physics simulation is not calculated. All physics-based nodes freeze if the distance from the camera to them exceeds the specified value, which is really useful in optimizing highly loaded scenes. The budget of simulation limits the time in seconds allowed for physics per frame. If physics takes more time, further calculations will be skipped. The FPS value defines the number of physical ticks per second. Too high values may result in lags and skipped frames. The scale factor enables you to speed up or slow down physics simulation time in order to add special effects or debug a scene. Only physics is affected while everything else is rendered at normal speed. You can improve the stability of physics by increasing the number of iterations per each tick. An iteration implies the full cycle of physics simulation. Higher values result in better quality and higher load. Achieving an acceptable result always involves a trade-off between accuracy and performance. Penetration parameters define the behavior of objects on collision. The penetration tolerance indicates how deep one object can penetrate another. The penetration factor is used to define the repulsive force. Estimate performance consumption of physical simulations by using the Profiler tool. Choose Tools, Performance Profiler, physics to enable it. The profiler shows physical statistics with the physics distance, such as the number of islands, groups of physical objects that are calculated separately, bodies, joints, contacts, and the duration of certain physics phases. For more details on physics phases as well as configuring simulation of physical objects, refer to our online documentation. Also, get familiar with the set of scripting samples included in the SDK. The collision shapes, force fields, joints, and physics sections cover virtually every physics-related issue.